Only for the fans, the podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Only for the Fans, the podcast, where we take a deep dive into the lives and choices of your favorite dancers, adult entertainers, only fan models, and more. Today, we have a woman who goes by the name of Firebug LaFleur. She is a webcam model and is most notably known for being a virtual girlfriend. Honey child, I didn't know nothing about it. Hey girl, hey. Hey boo. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm, I'm so happy that you're here. Thank you for being here. Um, we're going to do a cheers first. We're going we're gonna to cheers to you and me and the <laughs> podcast. Um, and we're going to have a great conversation today. So definitely cheers. Cheers. So before we get too deep, because I'm pretty sure people are watching Ooh, and they, isn't it delicious? Mm -hmm. uh, we have some people watching who want us to jump right in. But before we do that, uh, you and I, we've known each other for quite some time. Yes, we have. Yeah, we, we met in San Antonio years ago and uh, it's come full circle because now we're here. Divine. Divine energy. Divine energy. So let's let's talk about you. Let's talk about your upbringing. So um, where are you from? I am from South Dallas. South Dallas. Linway and Dunbar. Born and raised. Born and okay. raised. Okay. Yes. And have you always lived here or did you do any like traveling? Uh, San Antonio was just my second home. And then I immediately came back after, you know, being there and dealing with that life but i'm happy to be back yeah okay and so let's talk about uh your household so did you did you grow up um did you have any siblings did you have both parents in the household no uh i'm an only child on both sides of my family really yes my wow. dad is an only child we know nothing about it <laughs> and um my mother she is now an only child but she had a brother okay. and he passed away okay and did that happen when she was younger or as she got older I think I was about uh, 21 when it okay. happened. Yeah. Okay. So you were a bit older. So you were able to understand yeah. things. Okay. And you said that uh, two-parent home. Right. Okay. Mother and father. Are they still together? No. 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 Divorce? Um, it was my stepfather okay. that stepped in when I was about two. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And and But they're, your stepfather and your mother are no longer together? No. Okay. And was did that separation happen when you were a child or as you got into your adulthood? Yes. When I was about 13, they oh. separated. And, and then, then single parent. Single parent from the out. out. Yep. Okay. Do you think that, because right at 13, you know, that's that's adolescence, that's uh, puberty, you know, your body changing, feelings is changing. Do you think that your mother becoming a single parent at that particular time in your life played a role in your decisions as far as like your adult entertainment set? No, because the way that, I was raised was my mom took care of me and he took care of his stepchild. So he really didn't have a say. Mm, okay. Okay. So it just, it kind of moved forward as it kind of had always been. There wasn't this big abrupt change that happened. No. Okay. No, okay. it didn't bother me at all. Okay. Um, in your childhood, did you experience any sort of um, abuse any sort of sexual assault, did any of that type of thing occur? Because they say that most women who end up in the adult entertainment industry has experienced some sort of sexual assault, some sort of abuse, some sort of trauma. So did did you experience any of those things coming up? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, when ooh, I was absolutely. 11 years old. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, it was a cousin okay. that um, did some horrible things to me. And was I it liked, a male or female cousin? Male. Because... Let me specify. Because you never know. Male. You never know. Okay. Right. Male male cousin. And um, it, it was it was something that awakened. I call it my sexual demon was awakened mm. too early. And I was uh, just so promiscuous and I couldn't understand why. And mm. I didn't understand why nobody liked me and didn't want me around. Mm. I was just being myself. So... Um, you know, I began to kind of run away and, you know, because I felt like no one understood what I was going through. I did tell someone. Okay, very good. Very good. I did. I, I couldn't hold it. And they wanted to know what was wrong with me. Right. And um, they didn't believe me. Oh, wow. So it continued. Wow. 
Did it, you ever express to your mother at all? Absolutely. Okay. That was the first one. Okay. And things happened where she kind of told the family because she needed support, which I don't blame her for, no. but I, be, I was judged. So within your family. Right. Okay. And um, I wasn't allowed to come over to places. I was I was looked at differently. Mm. And um, I felt like I had no place in my family and no one really liked me. So I wanted to run away and I started doing that. And uh, eventually I was caught by the police and she put me in a boarding school. Your mom did? Right. Okay. I also kind of blame myself because I think that's why they got a divorce as well, because I think I was just too much. Okay, so the divorce happened- While I was in boarding school. While you were in boarding school. So this occurred after your incident. Right. And you believe that your mother and your stepfather, your, or maybe your stepfather couldn't handle the, the young woman that you were becoming because of the assault. Right. Mm, okay. So, And do you feel like, um, do you place any blame on your stepfather for leaving in such a critical time in your life? No. No? No. Um, I believe he just, he just couldn't handle it. If I was, if I had a child like myself, I don't think I would be able to handle it either. So he- It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. And did the relationship between your mother and you change once that emotional shift in you happened? Absolutely. Yeah. I felt like, she wasn't my friend, that she was just like everybody else, mm -hmm. judging me and saying bad things, telling me, oh, you're a hoe, you're this, mm. you're that. And your mom, your yes, mom was absolutely. calling you hoes and stuff. Wow. I can only imagine what that was like on your little pre-adolescent mind. I mean, to, to hear that from your own mom, do you think it made it easier for you to hear it from other people or harder for you to hear it from other people? easier because I always believe that's what I was mm -hmm. after, you know, a parent, my parent called me that. And, you know, ultimately the fam the family labeled me as such. Um, she got me help. I, okay. I had a therapist and I told them things, but I was still afraid to say the whole story because I didn't want to be taken away either. Okay. Yeah. Right. Because it was family related. Right. Right. Okay. And what is your relationship like with your mother today? Oh, we're good. We're best friends. Hey, okay. And at what age in your life did that shift again and start to become more positive? When I turned 30. 30? Yes. Wow. So about five years ago. Wow. So fresh. Yeah. Fresh. And is she, like, does she live in Texas? Like, yes. does she, you know. Oh, Cliff, baby. Okay. Okay. And do you see her? You'll see her? Oh, yeah. So she comes to my house and like every weekend and just like cooks for the kids. And Aww. we do our little charcuterie. We okay. Call it our little charcuterie. Our car yeah. charcuterie board. And, <laughs> you know, we catch up on um, podcasts and current events and laugh, talk, okay. chill, drink. Mom, I hope you're watching. Love we you, love mommy. you, mom. Yeah, We love you, girl. With my whole entire heart, girl. Yeah, it's not easy being a mom. No. And there's no rule book, no matter how many books you go pick up at Barnes and Nobles, there is no rule book to life or raising kids. And so I think for the most part, I don't believe this for every parent to be true, but I think for the most part as a mom, you do what you know and you do what you can. And sometimes that's not always the greatest thing or the right thing, but it is what it is. And I think that as we get older, uh, especially for women, as we get older, we have to understand that beyond being a mom, our moms, their daughters, their sisters, their wives, and they're themselves trying to figure things out for themselves. And so um, I think it's a blessing that you could forgive your mom and that you can move forward because you get one. Right. And, you know, what a feeling to not make things right. And then it becomes too late. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So blessings. Blessings that that yes. happened for you. Cheers I'm so happy. That. Yeah, cheers to that. Okay, girl, now. Now that we got the emotional stuff out of the mm. way. Uh, at what age? Because, you, you you know, you mentioned that you're, you were sexually explicit. You were you know promiscuous. And you kind of had jumped off the porch after this assault had happened. At what point did you start to get into the game? That's what we call it the game, the industry, and what did that look like? Was it dancing? Was it escorting? What What was your jump off? Okay, so 
I've never been an escort. Okay. I was a dancer first. Okay. And um, funny, I once I got out of boarding school, I attended Booker T. Washington. Oh, wow. So okay. I, I've always done ballet, tap, jazz, lyrical. I've always done that. So you were professional. Absolutely. Mm, yeah. I danced in the second company at Dallas Black Dance Academy, oh, wow. theater, all of that. Okay. So um, in that moment, like I had was fresh out of boarding school. I started liking girls because I felt like I had been done so wrong by men okay. that um, I just wanted to try. And then I was flooded with that at my school because so um, I had a best friend. I have a best friend um, that took me to the gay club and I was like, whoo, this new phenomenon. Yeah. Uh, women that look like men. <laughs> oh, okay. I can okay. do this. I think I can do this. And um, I just... I was just dancing in the club. It was like some a scene out of a movie. And this chick grabbed me that was that did the nights, the um promotion. Right. Okay. It was like, you need to dance on the box. So okay. I got on the box. For y'all who don't know what the box is, honey. <laughs> it's like a little stage, but just a little, just a little square. And um got this much. I jumped up there. I started dancing. People start putting money down my shirt. Mm -hmm. Mind you, I was only 15. Girl, what is you doing in the club? Because, you know, <laughs> at the gay club back then, I was going to Elm and Pearl. So they don't ID you. They right. let you walk in. Okay. So now we, I'm pretty sure you was cute, hot to trot. I didn't even wear weave then. Yeah. I was very fresh. And um, I got on the box. They started giving me money. And I was like, oh, I don't get paid to do this. All right. All right. Fuck those medals. I want to get paid. So I did that about two Fridays. And then the second Friday, she was like, you want to do a show? I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. Got out there, did the show. Um, and I was like, all right. So I just choreographed my own little deal. I have a DJ make me a mix up, which I already knew people because I danced and made me a mix up. And I went out there and it just they went crazy. So you were more of like a, a go-go dancer type right. situation. Right. And you were making money right. being a go-go dancer. Um, and so how long did you do that? I did that until I turned 17. Okay. So for about two years. Two years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My okay. mom found out I was gay because I was, you know, sneaking going out with these girls and she'd be like, okay, don't be I'll be going around those bull daggers because you're going to turn into one. And I'm like, mm, that's a little do you child. know. That is a little do you know, baby. I'm already, ah. Uh. So, um, <laughs> I'm caught up, mom. <laughs> yeah. And um, she caught me one day. She kicked me out. Oh, wow. Because and, of your attraction to women. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, several ups and downs. Several yeah. ups and downs. Okay. And um, I was like, ooh, okay, well. Let's get out there. I had a friend that was already 18 because 17, he was already 18 and we were about to graduate and we lived together and I was working, doing shows every Friday. I was at Elm and Pearl. Then I would leave Elm and Pearl and go to the brick. And that was just basically my income. They would give me like $50 up front and then I keep the tips. All your tips. Okay. Right. So how much were you bringing in per night with your payment and then tips at that time? Oh girl, like... <laughs> $250, $250. Well, that's good money at that age. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You think you're you know? balling right. at that age with that type of money. Okay. And so, um, and so where were you living? Your mom put you out. You're making $250 every time you go work, you know, at the spot. Where were you living? Uh, this little apartment right on Gannon in Oak Cliff. I think it was like Cedar Ridge called Cedar Ridge or something like that. Okay. Yeah. And you were there alone? You, no, like you had it was me, my best friend, and then our other best friend. Okay. So, so yeah. making it do what it do. Yes. I was I was the girl with the, the two gay guys. Okay. So yeah. That's okay. what they said in the apartments. Okay. All right. So y'all were comfortable. So where did the transition happen from, I'm just a go-go dancer, I'm enjoying myself, I'm using my art to good use, to full-blown booty, booty shaker, booty club? So it would be different girls that would come in transition and, you know, come in the gay club to do little shows that they would bring in. And I finally met a real stripper for the first time. And she said, girl, you have talent. You want to make some real money? Come that's check all, that That's what they say to you. Just let y'all know, you want to make some real money? <laughs> As if the money I'm making is fake. Go ahead. Right. So come shake your ass in front of some men. Mm. Come do that in front of some men and see what happens. So I had a little anxiety about that. Plus, I was still 17. Yeah, I would but, too. Uh, 
she the girl that did it at the time, uh, she she knew the club owner. She knew the owner of the club, the actual owner, not a manager. But the owner. So right. getting you in at that age wouldn't yeah, be no problem. I think she was like messing with him or something. But Usually I, got I got I went right up to Big T, got that fake ID, honey. Okay. And um, Hold up, what? No. <laughs> <laughs> what y'all selling up there? <laughs> and um I I got into the club, I got hired, and then ooh, I took off. Okay. Yeah. And what was that first night? Because for me, um, you know, I'm not unfamiliar mm -hmm. with the industry. Um, and I think that that first night that you, well, the first night can be also the first night you make a substantial amount of money or your first night could not be that. And then you have another day where it's like, this is the first time I actually like saw something more than what I was making. And so for me personally, my first night was not only my first night dancing, but it was the first time I had touched that amount of money in one moment. So what was your first day like in the club? Did you see like a spike in money that first night or was that first night kind of rough? It was, it was phenomenal. I oh. was, I was shocked because I was like, why did not do this at first? But Hey, I was 17. Right. Um, and I didn't know anyone, but, um, it was amazing. I had all the attention on me. Plus, you could tell I was new booty. Mm -hmm. So they were just on me. I probably made about $500. Damn. And I was just like, this Elated. is my new career. <laughs> yeah. One night, 500 Yes. You know what I'm saying? And you get to be, I'm pretty sure, a little bit more relaxed than being at the, you know, go-go club, you know, where you go-go dancing. You know, that's a lot of energy being put into that. Cause you did, I mean, there's energy put, being put into like stripping too, but mm -hmm. what did you, was there a big difference for you as far as like the amount of energy or work or sweat that went into from go-go dancing to, to stripping? Yeah. They had a pole and at the gay club. Something to hold pole. on to. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. um, the, the gay club didn't have a pole. So I, I had to learn how to dance around this pole and it wasn't more so choreography. It was just like, okay, whatever they play, you get out there and, and dance. And luckily I had training. So it didn't matter what you put out there. I was going to dance to it. And I guess just my style of dancing was so different than what they were used to that it just, it made me popular in some kind of way. And, um, yeah, I don't know if you remember those little magazines that they would have back in the day that, um, not magazines, but uh, newspapers when you would put the ads in the newspaper for oh, the different yeah. strip clubs. Yep. They got me taking pictures for the ad for the club. Woo! I'm not even old enough. None to be out here. Right. Wow. But yeah, I was like top girl one week. Okay. So 17, you jump off the porch, we strip it. Yeah. The club that you started at, was it a... Uh, fully nude? Was it topless? What was what was the nudity level at the first club? It was topless. It's I can topless. say the name of the club, right? Yeah, it's closed down now. Yeah, you can say it. Okay, um, it was Peep and Tom. Okay, who know about Peep and Tom? <laughs> and Hard Bodies. Okay. And I transitioned. I would work daytime at Peep and Tom. I mean, yeah, daytime at Peep and Tom's and then nighttime at Hard Bodies. Okay, and they were both just topless? Yes. Okay, so when is the first time that you got fully nude? Where what, what? How old were you then and where were you working? Because that's a jump. That topless to that taking off them panties. Yeah, I think I was like 18 at that time because I finally hit where legal I was, age. Yeah. Okay. And um it was, I want to say it was Jaguars. Yeah, it was something like that. Okay. I think so, it was Jaguar. And what was that like the first time that you was like booty butt out there? Honey, I was popping it. Did <laughs> I was already, I was like, ah. The cat was out I of the bag. Here I am. Because <laughs> I felt like, okay, I'm really going to get paid more here, which mm -hmm. I did. And what, so what was the jump money-wise from so, topless to nude? So that went to about 1200 Okay. About yeah. 1200 I just took the panties off too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then mm. also it was a Caucasian club. Okay. So more like evening gowns and- Right. Yeah. And private rooms and stuff. So let's talk about that a little more because I think that for those who are not like familiar with the game and the club scene, as a black woman, to be able to not only get into a predominantly like white club, but to be successful can be a challenge because it's not, it doesn't happen often. Right. Um, you're usually one of very few, if so, any. So what was it like not being around women who looked like you 
and seeing other women go and move and be successful? Did you learn? Were you intimidated? What was that like? No, it was it was good. They loved me because I was probably the, like the only black girl because back then they had that, you know, two black girl rule mm -hmm. where they could only hire so many and then, you know, maybe a mixed girl or exotic. So um, I was to I was the token token. So yeah. you ate up for those who came in there with those type of fetishes. Yeah. And, and like I was like 112 pounds. So they you know, the Caucasian men normally gravitate towards the real skinny, dark skinned girls. That's their fetish. Yeah. 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 And so um, at at the predominantly white club, like you said, it was more gowns and more a classy and more VIP type situation versus where you may have started. Right. What was that first VIP experience like for you? How much did you make and what was what was the what was the experience like and how was it different from what you had experienced before? Um, this guy gave me like two hundred dollars um, in the VIP, and we just sat back there. He just wanted to talk, mm, okay. and it was really a refreshing experience to me because I was like, "Oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to fuck or something," <laughs> you know. And I wasn't prepared for that because what I had been through, right. I wasn't trying to do all that. So, so up until then, you hadn't. No. gotten paid for any type of sexual favors or anything like that. That wasn't anything that had existed for you. Nope. Okay. Just strictly off talent. Dance. Strictly dancing. Yep. Okay. All right. And so you going to VIP, making this money for basically just talking, did it change your perspective on how you would make money moving forward? Or was it just more of like an experience? It did. I Even though I wasn't absorbing everything, it, it did in a way. And um, I... It was definitely, I could tell the difference between a more evening gown club or an urban club. Right. It was a difference. Right. Okay. And so how long were you there at that particular club? Oh, maybe like six months. Okay. So why didn't that last longer? Because I liked the urban feel. Mm -hmm. It was more exciting was for me. <laughs> yes. And the music was better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so... When did you make the transition from dancing? Because you're dancing, you're being successful with it, you're making money, you're living life, life is great. When did you decide, hey, I'm going to start doing webcam type of work? About six years ago. Okay. So yeah. it's fairly recent, right. right? Okay. And what created that thought? Because were you still dancing up until six years ago? Yeah. Uh, on and off. Okay. On and off. Okay. I danced while staying in San Antonio and that was about like four and a half years. And okay. then I transitioned after I left San Antonio. Okay. And so did you do anything in between there? Was there ever any regular job? Was there any other sort of adult entertainment work? I have never had a regular job in, your in life. my life. Wouldn't know what to do. How do, how do I clock in? I don't know. Um, yeah. Okay. Exactly. I ain't mad at it, child. Entrepreneur for life. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Entrepreneur for life. Okay. So there was nothing in between necessarily dancing and webcam. There was just a, a slow transition. Right. Okay. So what, what brought it to you? Like, how did you learn about it? Um, well, it is only been out since 2012. Okay. So I, I've seen it and I was like, Ooh, I don't, I don't know about that, you know, because it was taboo. And I had only known dancing. Okay. But um, they had like these little apps like Live.me and mm -hmm. stuff like that where you couldn't get new, but you could dance and stuff like that. So anyway, while I was in San Antonio, not only I'm, I'm lying, I was in the strip club, but I was a DJ as well. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know if you remember MGM. Yes. So I DJ from six to six okay. at MGM, and that was just like my little side hustle okay. while dancing at Babes and the Palace and stuff like that. Okay. But um, we had this we had this DJ named Woody that would be on meth, and he would like get off the <laughs> mic, and I would go up there and try to like fix it, and I figured it out just taught myself. Yeah. And they were like, hey, you want to DJ? I'm like, sure, why not? Like a little check. Yeah, it's a check on the side, why not? But um, it was, girl, if I got the question, this is some good wine. Yeah, girl, oh. listen, listen. I just low-key discovered 
I mean, I, oh, of course, I always knew about like Savon Blanc, but it wasn't anything that I had ever like really tried before. And my good, good girlfriend came up here for a interview and she was telling me like, you know, this is what I like. And so while she was here, she let me taste it. And I was like, oh, I'm sold, honey. I'm sold up on a little Savon Blanc. Yes, I think yeah. this is my new favorite. I think it's my new favorite too. So <laughs> very good. Very good. No, I was saying, um, how did you discover or get into the webcam? Oh, okay. So yes, uh, the the live dot me and uh, that happened and... Um, once I came back from San Antonio to Dallas, I, I just didn't do anything. I was very depressed. I didn't, you know, I don't want to dance anymore. I was over being touched. I was done. And um, my husband was fully taking care of everything. And I love you, babe. But he was like, how are you going to support yourself? How are you going to support yourself? You, you can't do anything for yourself. What if I die tomorrow? Then what? What are you going to do? And it really, like, it crushed me. And I knew I didn't want to dance anymore. anymore. So I looked up, you know, because I, I, I'm a talker. So I was like, well, let me let me do some, um, some phone sex or something. Maybe I could do that. Um, and that was okay for a while. And then I saw Chatterbait. Mm. And I was like, okay, Chatterbait, let's see. The art of chatting while masturbating. Hmm. How can I? Okay, let me try this. Then I started doing it, and I hid it from him, from your husband. Yes. And so, how long have you been married? When did you get married? How old were you when you got married? Uh, ooh, I don't know how old I was when I got married, but okay. uh, we got married in 2015. But we've been together five years before that. Five years. So, so it's 15 two, years. So 15 years together. in total. You, you've yes. been with your husband, and so he was with you through some of your dancing career, right? And he then... met me at Onyx. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so let me ask you this. He met you at Onyx. So, you know, was like he was he a customer? Was he tricking yes. on you? Like how how did that go? Yes. Okay. He was. And um funny, we I was upstairs giving him a lap dance and all of that and he overpaid me. He was like, "Would you like to date me?" I'm like, "Why?" <laughs> Life is good. Why? <laughs> Why? I, have, I have three kids. Why do you want to date me? And he was like, because I think you're cool. Like, you have great conversation. Like, I'd love to date you. And um, it just took off from there. Um, well, let me back up. The next day he called me and he was like, hey, you know, my car got stolen that night. I'm like, what? Oh my God, like, I'm in shock. I'm like, well, let me call some people and figure out what happened. If they can, like, if they can look at the cameras or something. He was like, okay, okay. He was like, nah, they already did that last night. I already made a police report. I'm already about to go get my new car. And I, he was like, I just wanted to get your reaction to make sure you didn't steal my key. <laughs> <laughs> and then we just we just became tight ever since. After that. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's a good way to meet. <laughs> okay. that's we, We'll give you, give you a pass on that. We, that was good. That was yeah. really good. That was solid. So, okay, so... Back to the webbing. So you were at home. Your husband's taking care of all the bills financially. Right, you're not right, doing nothing. Right. Maybe a little bored. And you're trying to figure out what's your next move to kind of bring some sort of income in. And Yeah, girl. He was fed up. Yeah. He was fed up. He was like, you're not going to keep ordering food. Like, who do you think you are? Right. <laughs> need some change. <laughs> like, no. Um, and I, I wanted to go to school, but I was like, mm. do I want to go to school? Right. And... Um, I just saw Chatterbait, got on that and started just doing it. And I was hiding it. And that's when GFE okay. came about, Girlfriend Experience. And I had the United States blocked. So I was only dealing with foreign customers. customers. Okay. And so can you, and you do it virtually. Right. Because you say you were never an escort. You never, you know, linked up with men in person. Right. So explain, because I was shocked when I first heard it because I'm like, how does this even make any sense? Mm -hmm. So explain what a virtual girlfriend experience is like, because in norm, like, you know, in real life escorting, a one, you know, the escort would meet up with the guy, they would go on a date, maybe movies, whatever the case may be. They would go back, spend some time together, you know, do what they do. And it is as if you are out on a date with your girlfriend. Right. So how does that work virtually? So I would take my laptop and take it to, first of all, they have to, we have to set up a contract for okay. an allowance. So once that would be in place, so like maybe two to 300 a week, depending okay. on what they, if they need to like text me whenever they want to call me whenever they want to. And we would Skype. 
So we would get on Skype and at night we would have dinner. I would go to like Gloria's or something. They would give me a place way in the back and I would set up my laptop and we would just talk and have dinner. He would pay for everything, all of that. Okay. And so then what's what's the after, right? Because we all know that, you know, there's there's probably some, some freaky things going on after the date. I mean, that's what you would do with your girlfriend. Absolutely. You go, we gonna get nasty. So Absolutely. what what is that like virtually? Um, yeah, we would definitely, you know, I would watch him jack off. I would masturbate myself. Um, on camera. Absolutely. Okay. Squirt, all of that, whatever he was needing. Okay. We would shower together. Okay. You know, I set up the camera and he could see me shower, get dressed. We go to sleep on the Skype, everything. Wake oh, up. Okay. Like he would, most of them will get mad if I just hang it up. Hang it up. So it's always on. The camera's always on. So it's basically like having a long distance relationship. relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then these are clients. These are, like you said, you have an allowance. So this right. is usually, you know, you have clients who are participating in these sort of dates on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when the money stops, I'll stop. Okay. And you make it very clear because you said it's like kind of contractual mm -hmm. or whatever. Yes. Okay. That's amazing. Y'all sleeping, ladies. <laughs> You're asleep. Okay. You are ahead of the curve. Well, you know, and so how long have you been doing the girlfriend experience? Um, for six years. Six years. Mm -hmm. And it has been quite lucrative for you. Yes. You could, uh, successful. Yes. For you. Okay. And it's so. snowballed. Now I have slaves and stuff. I can say that, right? You can say it, girl. Yeah, I'm slaves. trying to figure out what what's the team. Yeah. Slaves. Yes, I have slaves. I have toilet bitches. I have all of that. People get into some interesting things. Mm -hmm. That is crazy. So what is the most out? Because now we're about to get into it, girl. We know your life story now. Okay. So now we're we about to get into it, honey. All right. So what is the freakiest thing that one of your clients has asked you for? To see my shit. And see if it floats to make sure that I'm healthy. So like see it in the toilet. Yes. So I bought a camera called an endoscope. Okay. And you attach it to the seat and you can manipulate and bend it. It got a light on it? Uh, no. Nah. Mm -mm. Cause just I was just thinking it get a little dark in there if I'm sitting on it. I mean, but okay. It I depends mean, on one time, what time of day. Okay. All right. So no, I'm not sitting. I'm like squatting, squatting. spreading the cheeks. Yeah. Okay, so an endoscope, you hook it up to your toilet, mm -hmm. and it records. Yes. And so he wanted you to squat mm -hmm. and poop. To see, yeah, he wants he to, see to see it. He see it come out. Yeah, and if it floats. And if it floats. And I get paid extra if it floats. If it does it means float. I'm healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's the nastiest. Not the, the nastiest. nastiest. <laughs> that seems a little... I mean, not on, on his part. That's interesting. That's interesting. Okay. Anything else? Anything else that you think would be like at that caliber? Like that was some freaky ass stuff. Maybe not so freaky, but funny. Okay. Like I was, I was wrestling some Teddy, like some teddy bears. That's funny. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> that seemed a little fun. I was actually. doing that shit for like 45 minutes. I was cramping up, like putting them in headlocks. Like they like that shit. Oh, were you naked? Yes. Okay. And oiled up. I don't know. Yeah. That seemed a little interesting. <laughs> I don't know. I, don't um, know. I had another customer that um, would spin around in his chair and jack off at the same time. Like why he's spinning? Yeah, but, but I have you to not tell him to go, go. <laughs> I would be like, go, go, faster, faster. And like, I'll get distracted and be like talking to somebody else. And he's like, goddess, goddess. Tell me something. Yeah, he wants me to, he wants to go the other way. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, oh shit. Uh, go the other way, go the other way, my bad. Wow. I just wonder, like, how do people realize that... That they're into these type of things? Right. So I have no idea. Let me ask you this. Are, what race, what's the race of the majority of your clients? All different kinds. All different kinds. Yeah. I okay. think it's more so the businessmen like to be slaves. The, the powerful men like to be slaves. The uh, weaker men want to be uh, built up and encouraged and the foreigners just want the experience of an American woman. Mm. Do they talk about their accent? Yes, all the time. They like for me to say ass. Really? Yeah. I went to London and it's so funny being in another country because like when you're here, you think of people accent. You're like, oh, you're from France or you're from this. But when, when I was in London, they laughed at me so hard because of my accent. And in my mind, of course, I don't have an accent. Like I just speak. But... 
over there, they're like, you have a very ah, funny accent. You're yeah. American. So I can understand that. Okay. All right. This, well, so you, you are a pleaser. You aim to please. You want to fulfill the deepest fantasies. Right. And it works for you because you don't have to be physical with them in any way. Right. So how do you keep people from recording you? Like recording you and saving it or whatever else they may do with recorded footage. So uh, they have this company called DMCA okay. and they provide protection. You pay them about $100 a month. So mm -hmm. if anyone like puts your porn on like Pornhub or anything like that, you you can flag it, let them know, and they'll get it taken get down it taken for down. you. Right. Okay. So what's the name of that site for those who may? DMCA. DMCA.com? Yes. yes. Okay. And they provide protection. Okay. Yes. So very good for those who are in the sex worker in world. In the sex worker world, you want to go more virtual and you're looking for protection, that is the website to go to. I pay for it. But keep yourself safe so that your content isn't being misused Duplicated or, sold. or Yes. Okay, very good. Okay. So for you, being in the adult entertainment industry, what is your personal sex life like? Do you still get turned on? Do you have an active sex life outside of your job? Because some women say that being in the in in industry so long it kind of dulls out their actual real life sex life that is true it's true and that's true mm -hmm. um i mean we fuck but it's like i gotta really really be in the mood mm -hmm. or it's a slow week or something like that but most of the time this pussy tired and weary so is there anything that'll get you there? A little wine, a little edible, a little something? Definitely um, the white Hennessy. Okay. Gets, yeah. Okay, okay, so white Hennessy. No. <laughs> I don't want to be standing on the couch now. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> okay, yeah. so the white Hennessy will get you there. Yeah. Do you smoke? Do you do edibles? Do you, do you participate oh, yeah. anything like edibles, that? Oh, yeah. Edibles, I smoke. Okay. Yeah. And so those things will assist in kind of getting you there personally, like in your personal life. Right, right. Okay. And do you think that you're more sexually attracted to men or women or both? Both. 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 So it's equal. Absolutely. And so, you know, some you know, some women be like, yeah, I like women, but they they don't like them like that. They're not going all the way. I prefer a woman over a man. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So and you doing it all. You 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 licking, you kissing, you doing the whole thing. Yes. It's you. She ain't faking. I'm so, daddy. Oh, oh, oh. You daddy. I'm daddy. So you're more masculine when you're with women. I am a femme, but I'm dominant. I'm a dominant mm -hmm. femme. Okay. Okay. Mm. And with a man, I'm a switch. Okay. So you can you can be both. Yeah. So for those who don't know, a switch means you can play both dominant and what's the what's the other side of dominant? Sub. Sub. Submissive. Submissive. Yeah. There it is. Okay. Okay. Oh well, you know, and I I think that. Again, open space to be like, hey, although like I'm married to a man and I love him, I am more sexually attracted to women. Right. So do you and your husband, do you all have threesomes? Do y'all fool around with women at all together as a unit? Yes. Yeah. We've made content before. Okay. But yeah, I'm not going back to that. No. I'm good on that. So you so you used to make like OnlyFans type content with your husband. Right. So what made what made that not be a thing anymore? Because I make more money as a solo creator. Mm. Because, you know, the fact that I do do the girlfriend experience, that makes them jealous. Mm. And then that, that messes with the my miss, money. Yeah, mess up the So I'm like, okay, no, this is me. Was he sad when it was like, it's over? No, he was glad because I was using his dick as a prop for the longest. Okay. So he was like, uh-uh. Yeah, so Thank you so for okay. giving me my dick back. <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> I appreciate you. Thank you. So do you... Um, so if you don't mind, I mean, you can, you know, refuse the question, but so what, do, what does your husband do? He's in the oil field. He's in the oil field. Okay. So I think most of the time, like he's gone. Yeah. Yeah. He's not home. Like maybe once a month or once, like one week, a mm -hmm. month, something like yeah, that. Right. Yeah. What's the schedule? Like, like three weeks on one week off at home. Yes. So you're home alone with yep. the kitties mm -hmm. a lot. Yep. Okay. So, or, so do y'all have any sort of arrangement as far as like, listen, you be gone. I might mess around with some ladies or I might, you know, do some things like that. Or is it like, unless I'm there, we're not doing none of that. Get a toy, do something else. We tried that, but um, they ultimately just ended up beefing. So I was like, mm. uh, no, nah, I'm good. Mm. Okay. Like, I'll marry a man, but I won't marry a woman. Right. If that makes sense. Right. So do you fool around with women when he's at the oil field? No. No. So mm -hmm. there's no nothing. If no. y'all not doing it together. Right. Fully. Absolutely. Committed. 
Yep. That's good. So no open marriage or anything like that? Nope. Okay. Is it something that you have ever desired or that y'all ever dabbled in as far as like having an open marriage? I don't want an open marriage. Uh, I, I want... I do want a girlfriend, mm-hmm. but I don't want I don't want to be in a polygamous like relationship where she is there equal all to the you. time, right? Yeah. I want to pick and choose and like dabble di- with different girls. Mm. Oh, does that make me selfish? Mm, no, okay, I don't think so. I, don't care. I mean, some insecure <laughs> men out there may think that you're selfish, but I think that anything I don't necessarily believe in like a traditional marriage. I think yeah. that whatever works for two people who are committed to each other, that should be what it is. You know what I'm saying? And I think that there should be way less judgment on how two people who have committed their lives to each other behave within their marriage. You know what I'm saying? So I say, if your husband cool with a girl, go for it. I don't think you're selfish at all. At all, honey. Right. I love me I love me a good situation. Yeah, a little situationship. Okay. So do you ever, do you get lonely? All the time. Lonely? How do you how do you feel that void? I hug my puppies at night. <laughs> yeah, girl, don't get us depressed. <laughs> don't get us. But depressed. I do. I hug my puppies at night. I hug my children. You know, I feel like I've been out there for so long. Like I don't I don't want those problems. I don't want that drama. Yeah. So I'm basically a hermit now. I just dedicate myself to work yeah. and content making. Like. So how long do you think you'll you'll do this? The virtual girlfriend experience and the webcaming. How oh, honey, you forever. As long as you forever. know. Yes. Okay. So mm-hmm. you don't think there's an age limit to how long you could how long you could be in the in the game? Uh-uh, I'm gonna be a Ruth. What is a Ruth? You know, she's like the lady at night that used to tell you about the 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 sex toys and the new toys and oh. give you sexual education. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Miss Ruth. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Child, I don't know if y'all. <laughs> I probably had no business watching Miss Ruth. Right. But, okay. I didn't either. But yeah. Like yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So there is no age limit. Yeah. So for those who are like, I'm getting too old to be. Videos and pictures are timeless. You heard it here first. Look at Playboy. People are still looking at Playboy from back in the 60s, 70s, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so doubling back on you and your personal life, mm-hmm. what do you like sexually? in your personal life because you spend the majority of your time catering to what everyone else likes. What do you like? What gets you, what, like, what do you like? What do you get into? What's your, my zhuzh? Your zhuzh. Um, I like anal. Do you really? I'm a pain freak. Really? Mm-hmm. Tell me more. What got I you into that? I'm a pain freak. Um, I discovered that, like, I want to say 2016. And I was like, oh shit, I can come out my ass. Oh. And did you discover this with your husband? Yes. Okay. Um, no, it was 2015. That's okay. really how we got married. <laughs> Baby, listen, we're going to do something a little different. <laughs> he proposed to me after we finished. True story. Was that good, girl? Give me her five. <laughs> true, true story. <laughs> she was like, will you marry me? I was like, yeah, I guess okay. so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, I didn't realize I would like it that much. That much. I was so scared. And then when it happened, and, and I believe you do anal with someone you really trust. Mm-hmm. Um, start from the side and don't stick your butt out. Um, and just use a lot of lube. A lot. Yes. You know, they, I heard that they have like numbing cream and stuff now. Is that is that accurate? Does it work? I haven't even used it. She said, I need it all. Give me give me what it is. Yeah. Sock it to me. So it, I just like the pressure and the pain mm. and the pleasure all at the same time. It's just, it's a, it's a triple whammy that like I never experienced. And then the fact that it's so tight and the man gets so excited and the dick gets so hard, it just excites me and it just makes me want to throw it back mm. and just, yeah, oh, get it, get it, get it. And he's like, oh, I'm like, mm-hmm. So yeah. do you think that men climax faster doing anal yes really yes mm. okay okay so a gay man t- well my best friend told me he said once a man has ass he ain't never going back to the pussy and i was like what i was kind of like hating on it at first right he wasn't lying he wasn't lying he wasn't lying. so you feel like you and your husband do more anal now than you do like vaginal yes And do you like when you're using toys and stuff? Do you use toys anally as well? Uh, yeah, to to train it because okay. you have to, you know, get it ready first so it'll go in easily. 
So, uh, you know, I use a butt plug. You put the butt plug in and then you just kind of give it like 15 minutes. And when you pull it out, it's going to already retract be open. Oh, no. OK. So it's going to be open. open. Yeah. So, so, the, so it doesn't and, retract. So it doesn't take so long for him to get in, because sometimes if you just try to for it's like being a virgin, it it'll make the dick soft. It'll start bending. And he's just like, ah, oh, fuck this shit. Just put it in the pussy. Yeah. You know, so um, I think it's always key to put. The, the the butt plug in first, first at least 15 minutes before you act so right. so this is like day of you want to put it in there right and Walk loosen around, up have your little drink you know okay all of that and then once you that out and then you go right into yeah. it yeah okay okay you won't even need lube just going on in i hope y'all got a pen and paper and i hope y'all write <laughs> this down child for those who don't know Okay. Okay. So, anyway, is there anything else that you're into that you that you like personally that you like? That's my thing. This is gonna sound nasty, but I like ass to mouth. Okay. Whose ass and whose mouth? Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me spend some time. Um, uh, I like when you pull it out my ass and put it in my mouth and make me suck it. Mm. I like that. Um, you know, the truffle butter. I like that. You know, when but I don't get truffle butter because I dish my ass. Okay. Before what you gotta prepare hell is truffle butter. Oh, when you put the dick in the ass and go from the ass to the pussy to the ass to the pussy and then you Oh, and it's like this kind of foam, yeah. Yeah. Like, okay, substance. Right. Uh, substance. But I rarely have that because you know, you gotta clean out and prepare. Right. Okay. Okay. And so it's <laughs> it's important to make sure that you because you know I got a couple gay friends, you know what I'm saying? And they mm -hmm. didn't gave me the tea. But you know, I don't often have this type of conversation with a woman because, of course, with a gay man, he don't he don't got no poochie cat. So you know, so you're saying it's very important to clean. Yes, and you do that by because some people say douche and some people say enemas, fleets. Yeah. yeah. So fleet is good, but um, I take the I take the, the stuff out the dish and okay. make my own like little soap stuff. and water, and then I put it up in there and I keep doing it until it runs clear. Clear. Yeah. Okay. And so that and I know some people say like not to consume certain foods and certain things oh, right right to... right um so don't go have no enchiladas don't um i wouldn't do too much alcohol because you know that kind of loosens up no roughage like a uh, salad or mm. anything like so that. eat some fruit basically right okay absolutely fruit and pedialyte okay and what's what the pedialyte do um that's for the mouth. Like when you suck in and, you know, sometimes you stick it down there too far. If it comes up, you're not blowing chunks. And, oh, okay. Yeah. And, okay. So yeah. it makes it. And when you squirt, it's, it doesn't smell like Nothing. acid or look like orange juice. Okay. Right. Okay. Is there a specific flavor? I like the pink one or the clear one. Okay. Inquiring minds want to know. Everybody yeah. want to know. Okay. This has been informative. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Sure. Okay. Okay. And so. You say, you know, you say there is no time limit on, on, you know, your work and what you do. Right. You're going to be doing it. Your husband's cool with it. Um, because do you think that he, because he met you in like such a space and like you dancing and all this, it made it easier for easier for him to accept then and then like where you are now? Hell no. Oh. So what I didn't get into was how he caught me because oh. I remember I didn't. You I hide keeping it. it from him. So I was doing GFE and um, <laughs> he walked in while I was asleep. On me and my Yeah, and everything was set up and he was asleep too. So he just grabbed the computer and just smashed it. I was like, whoa. whoa now whoa. I have to get a new computer. Man. <laughs> and um, I was just like, no, no, no. He was like, oh, so you're cheating on me. This is the type of shit you should be doing with me when I'm away. And I was like, okay, look, let me tell you something. I'm doing this is for some money, you know. He was like, I don't believe you. Showed him my savings or whatever. Cause I didn't even have a bank account when I was with him at one point. Mm. So I went out, I got all of that. Because don't tell me I can't do something or I'm, I'm not able to do something. Right. Cause then now it's a challenge. So did that savings account it, it showed him something? It was Which, he, how much was it in the account? It was just come to my come to my <laughs> savings in the account. It was just like a thousand dollars. Oh, girl, yeah, I thought you were gonna say something like twenty five thousand or something. I, I had just started. Okay, yeah. okay. So it was like a thousand dollars, and okay. uh, he was like, "Oh, oh shit, you are doing this." He started picking up the pieces and shit, and it was like, <laughs> "I am so he was like, sorry." Okay, we're gonna go to Best Buy. <laughs> we're gonna get you a better camera, better this. We're gonna get you a ring light, and he just bought me the whole setup. Okay, he was for it. 
He's oh, like, yeah. you bring this type of money. Do compared to what doing nothing. Right. You know? Yeah. So. And I'm pretty sure it assisted with the household overall. You yeah. know what I'm saying? The type of money he was bringing in. So what what is the most amount of money, whether it be in your past or whenever, that you've made in one day? 45K. $45,000. Yeah. Some people aren't even making that in a year, honey. How did you do that? Um, just connecting. Can hey, you $20? Sure, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so on, um, there's several different websites. I discovered Chatterbait, Live Jasmine, Streammates, Cam Soda, my free cams. Okay. So I have all those combined on top of OnlyFans, which is the residual. Okay. So um, the monthly subscription for OnlyFans was just like $20. Okay. But so, And how many fans did you have or do you have currently? Currently, I'm probably sitting at about maybe 150, but it fluctuates. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But a lot of people are doing the free shit. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing it anymore. Mm -hmm. I like... Are you gonna pay point. or are you gonna get out the way? Right. And yeah. No paywalls, nothing. You get in, you see everything. Right. You know, and um, I got kind of late in the game with the OnlyFans thing because yeah. I had so much other shit going on and creating content. I was like, Ugh, I can go live. Why do I need to make videos? Right. So um, I have all those, I have like three cameras set up at once and I can just tab over. I mm. use the OBS software. You heard of OBS? No. Okay, OBS is just like a streaming software where you okay. can put your logos and stuff on and you can connect it and- um, Do different platforms and stuff. Right, right. Okay, okay. Yeah, and um, that's how I would put all the platforms on at once and- Go live. Like yep. And then one day, so did that include all, like, was the 45 throughout all platforms? Was it one person? No, it was from, no, it was all platforms combined. Combined yes. in one day. Wow. Yep. That's again. And it was people... a, a 27 hour stream. Wow. Yep. That's amazing. But during your stream though, what, like, what are you doing? Are you cooking, cleaning, sleeping? Yes. Cooking, sleeping. Um, it's a lot of people that are into, um, the, the porn where you, uh, I, I don't want to say it's not necrophilia. Cause I think that's when you fuck somebody when they're While they're asleep, but watching you sleep. Right. Made, like nude or so something. So they have this Lush. It's called a Lush. You put it inside you, and as they tip, it buzzes the inside. So they try to wake me up mm. by doing that. So and what's it called again? A Lush. L-U-S-H. Lush. Yeah. But they have so many different toys now. They okay. got the Hush, the Hyphy. The so when they tip, it buzzes. So the more they tip, the more it buzzes, thus them trying to wake you up. Right. Okay. Okay. And then I have a fuck machine. It, back then it was the Highsmith, but now Lovins makes their own suction machine. But you put the dick up to it; it's like this motor powered thing, and every time they tip, it moves and fucks me. And they want it to go yeah. as much as possible. And the higher so the that tip, the faster it goes. It goes. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. 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 Wow. And so then, what would you say was like the least of your your slowest day? How much? How much did you make? Uh, probably like. Maybe a thousand bucks. Okay, that ain't bad. Yeah. That's not bad. That's not bad. So it does fluctuate. Yeah. For the most part. There is no set that you're I mean, of course, the OnlyFans thing, that's like right. whatever, but as far as everything else, it goes up up and down. But for the most part, overall in a 30 day span, right. It's doing what it do. And that's why I feel like OnlyFans is definitely necessary because, you know, when you do have those bad days, you can go and cash out on your OnlyFans because you know how much you're going to make with those fans. And, you know, I always tell my fans, uh, look, if you put that renew button on, I'll give you free shit. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so you do in to a certain degree, you do care about your customers and your clients. Absolutely. Um, because you know, they're the ones that's paying. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, is there anything that you would like to promote? Do you want to promote any of your pages, your social medias, your whatever? You want the people to follow you? Because I'm pretty sure after this, maybe they're going to want to tap in. <laughs> I don't know. I might tap in. I don't know. <laughs> you should. You're welcome. I, oh, You're welcome. Th oh, okay. I'm welcome. <laughs> so um, I am on Twitter at bug711. Um, the same thing on my OnlyFans. Um, my IG is bug711 with three underscores. And... Um, Tap that all my fan all uh, all my links and you'll see all the webcam sites that I'm on. Okay. And before Seven we days go, a week, baby. before we go, 
the fire in the fire bug. <laughs> it means something. Yes. What does that mean? Because you said you you know you wish you had you know whatever whatever today. What does the fire in the fire bug? What does that mean? So I also eat fire. Yes, I eat fire and um, I do fire tricks and I've always loved to manipulate fire and play with it ever since I was a little girl. My Don't set the house on fire now trying to do what she do. Look, okay? <laughs> my grandma, yeah, be safe. My my great grandmother, um, I would take her little perfume like that, the white diamonds mm -hmm. and stuff and pour it all over her counter because it was like a glass type dresser top. And I just set it on fire. And how many times did she whoop your tail for that? Man, so many times. <laughs> And one time she was like in her coloring book, she got a little older and I said it on, you know, I just did it and just was kind of watching the blue flame. And she looked over, she was like, what are you, some type of fire bug or something? And that's where the name came from. Yeah. Shout out to Granny. <laughs> Shout out to you. Well, I, thank you. Thank you for coming and talking to me and telling me your life stories and letting me into your personal business. Okay? Thank you. Because at the end of the day, some do it only for the money. Right. Some do it only for clout. Oh, no, I love my job. But some do it only for the fans. And you do it for the fans. You do it for your, your clients, your fans, your followers. And we appreciate it because it feels like you take what you do seriously. Um, and, it, and it's working out for you. It's, it's feeding you and feeding your family. So it's a wonderful thing. So thank you so much for joining oh, thank us. Thank you. Yeah. So... Thank you all for tapping in to Only for the Fans, the podcast. Uh, follow me at I am the Angel White. What's your Instagram? Bug711 with three underscores. Bug711 with three underscores. And until next time, you guys, bye. Bye bye. Only for the Fans, the podcast. Aww.